Section 1.6, the design of experiments, objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the characteristics of a designed experiment, explain the steps in designing an experiment, explain the different types of experimental design, and then design your own experiment. Now, we want to review the definitions of cross-sectional studies, case control studies, and cohort studies. Remember that cross-sectional studies are observational studies that collect information about individuals at a specific point in time or over a very short period of time. Case control studies are observational studies that are retrospective, meaning they require individuals to look back in time or require the researcher to look at existing records. In case control studies, individuals who have certain characteristics may be matched with those who do not. And then there's cohort studies. They are observational studies that follow a group of individuals over a long period of time. Characteristics of the individuals are recorded and some individuals will be exposed to certain factors, not intentionally, and others will not. Because the data are collected over a long time period, these studies are prospective. Now, in observational studies, we cannot make statements of causality between the explanatory variables and the response variable. The response variable measures the outcome of the study, and the explanatory variable is the variable whose impact we want to see has on the response variable. So the first objective is to be able to describe the characteristics of an experiment. Now, an experiment is a controlled study conducted to determine the effect of varying one or more explanatory variables or factors has on a response variable. So any combination of the values of the factors is called a treatment. The experimental unit or subject is a person, object, or some other well-defined item upon which a treatment is applied. A control group serves as a baseline treatment that can be used to compare to other treatments. A placebo is an innocuous medication, such as a sugar tablet that looks, tastes, and smells like the experimental medication. Blinding refers to non-disclosure of the treatment an experimental unit is receiving. In single blind experiments, the experimental unit or subject does not know which treatment he or she is receiving. In double blind experiments, neither the experimental unit nor the researcher in contact with the experimental unit knows which treatment the experimental unit is receiving. Now, the use of placebos in design experiments is a way to form a control group in a designed experiment. Often, placebos take the form of medication. However, a placebo might also be a procedure that follows the same steps as the experimental procedure, but leaves out a key intervention. So, for example, a procedure called vertebroplasty where medical cement is pumped into a spine fracture was tested through a designed experiment. All subjects went through a surgery to repair the spine, but only half received the medical cement. An, interest, an interesting outcome results from the vertebroplasty experiment. A subject in the placebo group found that the procedure resulted in complete abatement of the back pain even though she did not receive the medical cement. This type of phenomena in an experiment is referred to as the placebo effect. A book entitled Cure by Joe Marchant explores the placebo effect. In the book, she suggests that placebo treatments can have measurable effects. For example, in patients with Parkinson's disease, placebos caused an increase of the neurotransmitter dopamine. In a study of 459 migraine sufferers, it was found that the placebo effect accounted for about 60% of the benefit of the drug Maxol. Of course, the placebo effect will not account for improvements in, somewhat, in someone with a tumor or replace insulin with someone with diabetes. However, the Maxol study suggests that remedies for pain, nausea, or depression rely extensively on the placebo effect. Now also recall confounding in a study occurs when the effects of two or more explanatory variables are not separated. In design experiments, confounding may occur as a result of a confounding variable, which is an explanatory variable that was considered in a study whose effect cannot be distinguished from a second explanatory variable in the study. 
Now, the example we used to illustrate the concept of confounding was Professor Egner's study on the effect of online homework versus paper and pencil homework on final exam scores. Professor Egner taught her morning class using online homework and her afternoon class using paper pencil homework. If the final exam scores for the morning class were higher than the afternoon class, we cannot tell whether the high exam scores are a result of the homework system or the time the class is offered. Therefore, the explanatory variable homework system is confounded with the explanatory variable time of day. Now, well-designed experiments will account for the potential of confounding in a study. So let's take a look at an example here. The characteristics of an experiment Lipitor is a cholesterol-lowering drug made by Pfizer. In the collaborative Atorvastatin diabetes study, which is also called CARDS, the effect of Lipitor on cardiovascular disease was assessed in 2,838 subjects ages 40 to 75 with type 2 diabetes without prior history of cardiovascular disease. In the placebo-controlled double-blind experiment, subjects were randomly allocated to either Lipitor 10 mg daily 1,428 or placebo 1,410 and were followed for four years. The response variable whether the response variable whether there was an occurrence of, a ma of any major cardiovascular event or not. Lipitor significantly reduced the rate of major cardiovascular events, 83 events in the Lipitor group versus 127 events in the placebo group. There were 61 deaths in the Lipitor group versus 82 deaths in the placebo group. So part A, what does it mean for the experiment to be placebo controlled? Well, the placebo control group serves as a baseline against which to compare the results from the group receiving Lipitor. B, what does it mean for the experiment to be double blind? The subjects, as well as the individual monitoring the subjects, do not know whether the subjects are receiving Lipitor or the placebo. C, what is the population for which this study applies? Well, the population are the individuals from 40 to 75 years of age with type 2 diabetes without a prior history of cardiovascular disease. And what is the sample? Well, the sample is the 2,838 subjects that are in the study. What are the treatments? Their treatments are 10 milligrams of Lipitor or a placebo daily. What is the response variable? The response variable is whether the subject had any major cardiovascular event, such as a stroke or not. Is it qualitative or quantitative? Well, the response variable is qualitative. Okay, it's not a countable event. Objective two, explain the steps in designing an experiment. To, to design an experiment means to describe the overall plan in conducting the experiment. So the steps in conducting a designed experiment. Step one, you want to identify the problem to be solved. The statement of the problem should be as explicit as possible and should provide the experimenter with direction. The statement must also identify the response variable in the population to be studied. Often, the statement is referred to as the claim. Step two, determine the factors that affect the response variable. The factors are usually identified by an expert in the field of study. In identifying the factors, ask what things affect the value of the response variable. After the factors are identified, determine which factors to fix at some predetermined level, which to manipulate, and which to leave uncontrolled. Step 3. Determine the number of experimental units. As a general rule, choose as many experimental units as time and money allow. Techniques exist for determining sample size, provided certain information is available. Step 4. Determine the level of each factor. Factors can be dealt with in two ways. Control or randomize. Control means to either set the factor at one value throughout the experiment or set the level of the factor at various levels. Randomize means to randomly assign the experimental units to various treatment groups. Step 5. Conduct the experiment. Replication occurs when each treatment is applied to more than one experimental unit. 
Step six, test the claim. Inferential statistics is a process in which generalization about a population are made on a daily, on, excuse me, on the basis of results obtained from a sample. Now to help understand the steps in designing an experiment, we're going to review the previous example. Okay, so here was the previous exa example. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to list the six steps for the Lipitor study example. So step one, identify the problem to be solved. Well, the problem to be solved is to determine whether 10 milligrams of Lipitor daily reduces the likelihood of having a major cardiovascular event in 40 to 75 year old subjects with type 2 diabetes. Step two, determine the factors that affect the responsible response variable. Some factors that may affect whether one has a cardiovascular event are diet, exercise, family history, and level of cholesterol. Step three, determine the number of experimental units. Well, the sample size, there were 2,838 subjects in the study. Step four, determine the level of each factor. The factor of interest is the drug, which was set at two levels, a placebo and 10 milligrams of Lipitor. Although not stated, the researchers likely fixed the diet of the subjects and fixed an exercise re regimen. Family history cannot be controlled, so the random assignment of the subjects to two groups will average out a bad family history of heart disease. So for example, we would not expect all subjects with a poor history of heart health to end up in the placebo control group. Then conduct the experiment for step five. The subjects were randomly assigned to either the placebo or Lipitor group, and there were 2,838 replications of the experiment. In step six, you test the claim. The inferential statistics suggest that Lipitor group had a lower rate of major cardiovascular events. Objective three, explain the completely randomized design. A completely randomized design is one in which each experimental unit is randomly assigned to a treatment. Now the study from the previous example is a completely randomized design because each experimental unit, the 2,838 subjects, was randomly assigned to either the placebo group or the Lipitor group. So here's an example, a completely randomized design. A farmer wishes to determine the optimal level of a new fertilizer on his soybean crop. Design experiment that will assist him. Step one, the farmer wants to identify the optimal level of fertilizer for growing soybeans. We define optimal as the level that maximizes yield. So the response variable will be crop yield. Step two, some factors that affect crop yield are fertilizer, precipitation, sunlight, method of tilling the soil, type of soil, plant, and temperature. Step three, in this experiment, we will plant 60 soybean plants, which are experimental units. Step four, list the factors in their levels. Fertilizer, this factor will be controlled and set at three levels. We wish to measure the effect of varying the level of this variable on the response variable, yield. We will set the treatment level of fertilizer as follows. Treatment A, 20 soybean plants receive no fertilizer. Treatment B, 20 soybean plants receive two teaspoons of fertilizer per gallon of water every two weeks. And treatment C, 20 soybean plants receive four teaspoons of fertilizer per gallon of water every two weeks. Precipitation, the amount of rainfall cannot be controlled, but the amount of watering done can be controlled. So each plant will receive the same amount of precipitation. Sunlight, this, is un, uh, this, this uncontrollable factor will be roughly the same for each plant. Method of tilling, control this factor by using Roundup Ready method of tilling for each plant. Type of soil, soil. Certain aspects of the soil, such as level of acidity, can be controlled. In addition, each plant will be planted with a one acre area so it is reasonable to assume that the soil conditions for each plant are equivalent. The plant. There may be variation from plant to plant. To account for this, randomly assign the plants to a treatment. Temperature. This factor is uncontrollable, but will be the same for each plant. Step five. Randomly assign each plant to a treatment group. 
First, number the plants from 1 to 60 and randomly generate 20 numbers. The plants corresponding to these numbers get treatment A. Next, number the remaining plants from 1 to 40 and randomly generate 20 numbers. The plants corresponding to these numbers get treatment B, and therefore the remaining plants get treatment C. Now, till the soil, plant the soybean plants, and then fertilize according to the schedule prescribed. At the end of the growing season, determine the crop yield for each plant. Step six, you determine any differences in yield among the three treatment groups. So if we take a look at the figure below, it's gonna illustrate the experimental design. So this is the random assignment of plants to treatments. Group one receives 20 plant, plant plants, group two receives 20 plants, and group three receives 20 plants. And the first one is treatment A, no fertilizer. The second one is treatment B, two teaspoons. And group three for treatment C, we represent four teaspoons and then you're gonna compare the yield for all three of them. Now this is a completely randomized design because the experimental units, meaning the plants, were randomly assigned to the treatments. It is the most popular experimental design because of its simplicity, but it is not always the best. Objective four, explain the matched pairs design. A matched pairs design is an experimental design in which the experimental units are paired up. The pairs are matched up so that they are somehow related. That is, the same person before and after a treatment. Twins, a husband and wife, same geographical location, and so on. There are only two levels of treatment in a matched pairs design. In matched pairs design, one matched individual receives one treatment and the other receives a different treatment. The matched pair is randomly assigned to the treatment using a coin flip or a random number generator. We then look at the difference in the results of each matched pair. One common type of matched pair design is to measure a response variable on an experimental unit before and after a treatment is applied. In this case, the individual is matched against a self. These experiments are sometimes called before and after or pre-test and post-test experiments. Here's an example of an, a matched pair's design. An educational psychologist wants to determine whether listening to music has an effect on a student's ability to learn. Design an experiment to help the psychologist answer the question. Will you match students according to IQ and gender? Flip a coin to determine which student gets the quiet room and which student gets the room with music playing in the background. Each student will be given a statistics textbook and asked to study section 1.1. After two hours, the students will enter a testing center and take a short quiz on a material in the section. Now we compute the difference in the scores of each matched pair. Any differences in scores will be attributed to the treatment. So again, match students according to gender and IQ, randomly assign a student from each pair to a treatment, administer treatment and exam to each match pair, and then for each match pair, you compute the difference in scores on the exam. And therefore that concludes section 1.6.